possible to reconstruct a person's life based solely on their online data? Their thinking, speaking, acting, without ever having met the person? We gave it a try. 100,000 data points. One life, one person, and one double. Online data reveals behavioral patterns, who we are, what we're interested in, and how we're feeling at a particular moment. Searched for, why do I feel so empty inside? You're in a vulnerable moment, and these companies are just profiting. They're taking advantage of you. We can predict the psychology of millions of people with really just a few clicks. Searched weight loss. There is an industry that operates behind all of our backs, selling dossiers about us and our most intimate characteristics. Searched, I don't want to go back home. At that moment, I understood the ramifications of this experiment. Does your data reveal who you really are? We live in a world where almost everything we do leaves data traces. Data trails that reveal something about our interests, our desires, may reveal who we are as a person. At least that's something that um, researchers of uh, the Stanford and Cambridge University have been claiming. Facebook and Google can draw conclusions about our personality and our future behavior even more accurately than friends, partners, and family could do. These studies spread like a wildfire across the world. Facebook likes predict personality. Facebook knows you better than anyone else. But, is, but what is really behind such claims? What exactly do we all reveal when we are online or when we use our smartphones? That's exactly what we wanted to know. My name is Hans Block, I'm part of the artistic group Laocon, and together with uh, Moritz Rieswig and Cosi Materas, we have created an artistic experiment made to measure. The bet? Is it possible to reconstruct a person's life based solely on online data without ever having met the person? And is it possible to create a double based on the data? We've tried it. And to start the experiments, we needed volunteers willing to give us their data. So we launched an open call across Europe, asking people to give us their personal data. And that's exactly what people did. Surprise, surprise, we got a lot of mails. Over 100 people were willing to participate uh, in our experiment. And from so many submissions, we selected one data set, data set 25. And since the amount of data we could have used would have been so rich to create a lookalike from, we decided to use only Google data. Before we started filming, we analyzed the data with data analysts, with data scientists and data journalists. Over 100,000 individual data points over a period of five years. And all this data eventually becomes a movie. But before that, we cast an actress who we thought is very close to the original. And then we started filming. I am data set 25. This is what I could look like. This is how I could <laughs> laugh. How I could speak? I don't know what to say right now. Uh, will we be alike? I wonder about my name. How close will I be to the original? A collection of data, and me as its embodiment, the double. What made me become who I am today? Do I even want to know everything about myself? I think I don't want to know. I will become the double thanks to more than 100,000 pieces of data and hundreds of correlations and connections. But can you really reconstruct a human life based solely on Google data? We examined every little detail of my data set in order to reconstruct my life. We reconstructed all of that. 
piece by piece on a stage. We reconstructed places where I might have stayed. Reenacted daily routines as they might have happened. Revived past relationships that I might have been in. We turned my life into a film, turned your life into a film, and your data was the script. You don't know any of that yet. External characteristics such as height, age, gender, the color hair, um, profession, origin, musical taste were relatively easy to track down. But the insight into the life of Dataset 25 went much deeper. Also highly sensitive information such as weaknesses, fears, needs, desires, diseases, behavioral disorders were apparently reflected in the data set. But where we right with all our assumptions, does the data reenactment really correspond to the life of the original? A few months later, the doubleganger and the original met each other. And to be honest, the encounter really developed an increasingly uncomfortable reality. Hallo. Hallo. The first meeting of the two of them lasted more than four hours. And in the conversation, the actress revealed more and more details about the life. The growing up in Austria in a small valley, the uh, career as a pastry chef in a five-star kitchen in England, failed relationships, and also a moment where she was locked in a room with a little gecko and didn't know what to do. But even moments that the participant might not like to remember. Searched weight loss. Searched for Love Yourself lyrics Justin Bieber. Searched intermittent fasting. Searched therapist for internal crisis. The hopeful walk to the scales, checking whether I had lost weight or not. The relief when I had lost weight. And the disappointment when the number remained the same. My, My God. God. I know it's a taboo topic, very few people talk about it, but I'm here, wondering if my data would reveal it. I don't think I've ever Googled the term, eating disorder. For a long time, I wasn't able to voice it, not even to myself. Maybe part of the reason I'm here is to confront a side of myself. <laughs> What does this tell us? It's not just us, the artist group La Ocon, who had to have access to all this sensitive information, at least some of the time. It's mainly the big companies like Google and Facebook trading such sensitive information day by day. If advertisers want to exploit people's vulnerabilities, weaknesses, addictions, they can do so by using a global set of rules. And if you look in this industry standard, it's called IAB, Audience X Taxonomy, you will find interesting things. More than 1,600 very, very intimate characteristics about people, such as interest in gambling, interest in bankruptcy, interest in death. It's even possible to target people based on their health condition, including things like cancer, STDs, or mental disorder. And more worrying, authorities empowered to do something have done nothing. The participant of our experiment decided to stop the experiment at some point. Not only because 
the intimate details we confronted her with became more and more incriminating, but also, at some point, she couldn't longer tell whether these were her own memory or this is our narrative. And that was the, and that was the point we thought we have to stop that and we understood the power of this data. And by ending the experiment, the participant choose to regain sovereignty about her, about her past and future. Let me tell you one last thing. The idea of the autonomous individual is based on the assumption that everything we do is free. We can shape our world and the future is open. But the free and open world is crumbling because with the proliferation of algorithmic forecasting tools that want to be able to predict our future desires, our future aspirations, our future action, a competitive narrative enters our free world, turning an open and mainly freely creatable future into a predictable, predetermined one. It's not God's that assign a destiny for each of everyone. It's the data. The, those wisdom received and transmitted by algorithms. And the more we are surrounded by these recommendations, the greater the likelihood that our actions ally to these recommendations. And therefore, the prophecies can become self-fulfilling. With Made to Measure, we started the attempt to make these invisible phenomena visible and tangible. If you want to experience the full data experiment, visit our website, madetomeasure.online. And it could have been that you're not only a passive observer, but also be the object of observation. Thank you so much. <laughs>